Hello and welcome back to the Now We Know show, the show where we discuss a topic of interest and by the end we will have learnt something new and hopefully you will too. I'm Zach. I'm Buzz. And I'm Tina. <gasps> Tina's Ooh. here. Tina's in the studio. Oh, I wonder what Tina's in for. We're going to find out because this week we are going to discover all about Christmas carols. <gasps> If you enjoy the Now We Know Show podcast, why not support Zach World Productions on our Patreon page? Become an official ZWP patron for as little as £1 a month for exclusive early access to all our latest episodes, videos, behind the scenes, updates and more. So, before we get into that, it's time for... Oh, of course. Word of the Week. 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 So Word of the Week is all about old English words we don't use anymore. All you have to do is write down what you think it means in the comments. We will then reveal what it means at the end of the episode so you can find out if you got it right. So, Zach, what is this week's Word of the Week? So, the Word of the Week this week is Elf Lock. Elf Lock? Elf Lock. Is it Elf Lock or Elf Flock? Elf Lock. With an L. So, it's spelt E-L-F-O-C-K. Elf Lock. Right, so this sounds kind of festive. Well, you'll find out at the end of the episode. But I must have it. I don't know what elf lock means. No googling. Find out at the end of the episode. We're going to fit it into a sentence. So in this episode, we're going to find out, as I say, about Christmas carols, history of Christmas carols. Everybody loves a Christmas carol. Why do we have Christmas carols? And we've got our special guest Tina in the studio. A seasoned caroler. A seasoned caroler, as you say. And we might get the odd rendition of her. Ooh. Hmm. That'd be interesting, won't Exciting. it? Exciting. Well, there you go. Are you excited, Tina? Are you feeling the festive spirit? Are you full of mince pies and figgy pudding? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are wearing the, the festive hats. Yeah, it's the festive season. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, so let's look at the history of carols and where they're from. Now, I'm not a Christian myself, but I do love a Christmas carol. Yes. And I've loved them ever since I was a kid. And just like any other kind of music that you have from countries all around the world, uh, you have lots of different types of music. You don't have to be a cowboy to enjoy country and western. So, <laughs> so my point is anybody can enjoy a traditional Christmas carol. Yes. You know, I find them uplifting. They remind me of my childhood. I used to sing in the choir at school back those days. I did even go to Sunday school when I was a kid. And, you know, I just have great memories. And, and a good Christmas carol kind of makes you feel... Well, it feels Christmassy, doesn't it? Festive. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It kind so of feels uplifting. like the snow. It's the snow, isn't it? It's uplifting. the snow. It paints a picture. Christmas trees. Yes. That's it. Village ponds. Yeah. Like, you know, all sorts of things. You know, frosted frosted roads, little cottages with snow on the thatching. Yeah, like a Christmas card. Exactly. Yeah. So it, there you go. It's a vocal Christmas card. Oh, there you go. I like that. I like, yeah, that. I like that. That's good. So let's, let's just have a look. So if you've ever wondered when Christmas carols first came about, the answer lies... In kind of about the 14th century, although their evolution sort of dates back obviously further than that, uh, even before Christianity, because as we said in the uh, Krampus podcast, uh, where you have those old pagan festivals, there would have been songs, chanting, stories, dances, and so all festivals will have these kind of traditional songs that would be sung at a certain time festival at a certain time of year um, so they go back for hundreds if not thousands of years with um, you know to keep people's spirits up especially at this time of the year when we're coming into the dark long dark months of the year and in certain northerly climes you lose the sun altogether for a period yeah, of time yeah, as, that, as we, we mentioned just... that in the other podcast exactly so as christianity spread across europe and we get to the 14th century the first carols started to be produced by the Franciscan friars, who were who were followers of Saint Francis of Assisi, and these kind of took the form of a dance in a circle with linked hands and everybody singing these songs. And huge numbers of Christmas carols survived from the 15th century, making it the best preserved aspect of English medieval music because they were so popular. That's uh, so that so that's why we have such a rich history in these Christmas carols surviving. Whereas other 
uh, songs and things which were probably sung at other periods of the year have fallen by the wayside. Right. But carols have, have stuck with us. And, and it's believed that the dances associated with early carols died out as people just got bored with certain seasons of the year singing. So originally, as I say, carols weren't just associated with Christmas. They were associated with other seasons as well, but not as popular as the Christmas carols, which have survived over the, you know, the centuries. So when we get to Christmas, it's a real festivity, especially going into the darkest months of the year. So Christmas carols survived where carols linked to other parts of the year generally died out. So, Tina, what got you into singing and Christmas carols? Well, it was actually my grandmother who got me into singing when I was about 10 or 11 years old. I had been to Sunday school and things like that previously, but I was generally interested in music. That, and also I had the most wonderful music teacher at school called Mr Ballard. Good old Mr Ballard. Good old That's Mr Ballard. Name. I like that name. And he was amazing. He was, he was just a fantastic teacher. It's really nice when through. a certain teacher, years later, still sticks in your mind. Mm. And that, that just proves the point that they, they did their job well. Okay. So what did Mr Ballard introduce you to? Well, the funny thing was I remember being the first year of senior school. Okay. And we would... Well, it was quite amusing, actually, because when you're at junior school... You're all there in the hall and you're having a good old sing-song to the as hymns. As a group, yep. As a group of people. Did you have those big flappy kind of bits of with, paper that hang down? Exactly, with the big flappy bits of paper. But flappy the f- bits of paper? Didn't you have those? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was at school, and obviously it sounds like when you were yes. at school, Tina, they had like this huge pad of paper with the lyrics for the songs. So whether it was Christmas carols or hymns, they, they, they were on a bar sticking out from the wall. And we had a teacher with a rod who used to flip, <laughs> flip the sheets. No over. way. Yes. Yes. Was this like an, as- an assembly? Yeah, so all, yes, absolutely. All, all the kids would be in there and you'd be looking at this massive big paper pad that was just hung off the wall. And then, the, then Mr. Hedger in our case would flip. Well, that's flip completely around. different for me. It was, we had a projector. Oh, right. And then people Technology. from, I think it was year four, were actually kind of like on a rotor of you've got to be the projectionists. Right, okay. So you've got to change the sheets on the projector as they they get sung. Uh, and you get told off if you haven't organised the music okay. during the assembly, and if you change it at the wrong point, you get told yeah. off again. So it was actually quite mean in that respect. It was respect. just a giant paper pad and a, yeah, and a wooden stick. A bit more technical. Anyway, so, 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 so as the years have gone, it's become more and more technical then. Yes, it has. Yes. But... No, so, that, so you, that, you, that you were most, singing. That is most interesting. I, I guess there must have been a teacher there at some point with a pen, a nice black pen writing yeah, all the words. Yeah, because it was all very all well perfect. written. Was it handwritten? Yeah, handwritten, oh, yes. usually in italic writing. Oh, wow. It's probably, probably in my case, our headmaster was... Uh, 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 he, he, he used to take the italic writing... Cause did you have fountain pens back in the day? Yes. Yeah, so we all had to do... The, the Italian one. Anyway, we're going off. <laughs> we're going going off of, you, so, had, you had to get a pass, didn't you, to be able to be allowed to do, a, do your a, calligraphy with it. your pen. And it was really good because the pen went together in lots of different ways. Yes, and you had proper ink and, and it would smudge That's everywhere it. if you weren't careful. Anyway, no, no, the, funny, the, singing. The, funny, the funny thing was <laughs> we'll get to that it. When, we'll get you're, to when you're at junior school, yep. everybody's there Have having it. a good old yeah. sing song. And I remember the first assembly that I went to in senior school. Yep. Everybody was mumbling. Ah, that's because they were too so cool quiet. for school. <laughs> they were so quiet. And I, I just sort of went Burst to go and out. have a good old sing. And it's... You're the only one singing. Everybody's like mumbling. Oh, wow. In, in, fact, <laughs> in fact, I have a theory about this. Because as the years went on, yep. when we got to the third year of secondary school, mm-hmm. we changed headmaster. Okay. And then suddenly, instead of having whole lower school or upper school assemblies Mm -hmm. you would just have your year assembly and you would get to sit on chairs rather than sitting on the floor oh wow floor yeah but they never then did any singing whatsoever and i always thought that was a terrible shame so you started singing your carols at school uh probably not actually okay so you you didn't you didn't have a school choir that you were in then I was playing guitar at the time, so oh. did I? I don't think I was in a school choir. So when did, when did you first join remember. a choir to set you on the road to singing carols? Actually, gosh, that is bringing some memories back. Actually, yes, I was in a choir. 
So that really is going back. I was in the choir and I remember that we had these kind of uh, mobile kind of classrooms. Mm -hmm. And I remember that we had a choir in my junior school again. So at that point, I must have actually been younger than I said. I must have been younger. Okay, so your route from then went into senior school, as you say. And then was it through senior school, your love of singing in the choir carried you on? Or did you start singing in a choir when you left school? Because I know from an early age, you were singing in a church choir. Yes, I'm just going to go back because you've got me thinking now. In fact, I remember my very first audition was actually to be one of the three shepherds in a school that I was attending for a little while with my cousin Amanda. Was this up in Lincolnshire? No, no, this was actually in Harrow. Oh, in Harrow, right. And I sung Bar Bar Black Sheep. <laughs> oh, wow. Was uh, this that, the audition? This was the audition. That very well-known choir. Uh, <laughs> ca Christmas Carol, Bar Bar Black Sheep. <laughs> it's Bar Bar Black Sheep. Gosh, that now. Did you wow. get through the audition? Yes, I got to be a shepherd. Well, you got to be one of the I shepherds. I got to be one of the shepherds, but I never actually got to do the show because oh, my, no. fa my family moved away. So. Oh, no. Now, when I did the nativity or whatever it was, I was one of the three innkeepers. Three, yeah, three innkeepers. Well, I can't remember. I can't remember. It was like innkeepers. I was an, an innkeeper, okay? Yeah, I, I think there were three. I actually do recall coming to watch you on yes. stage. Yeah. And I remember Joseph and Mary coming and knocking on the door and asking if you had room. And you said that they could go and use the stable. Mm. Stable? Stable. And I remember Joseph and Mary coming to the door and asking if you had room in the inn. Yeah. And you said that they could use the stable. But, and then some money was meant to exchange hands. Yes. They didn't and... follow the script, okay? They didn't follow the script. <laughs> All I recall is Joseph and Mary then trying to wander off stage with an innkeeper chasing after them saying... Grabbing hold of Joseph. <laughs> Give him the money. Putting him, in a, putting him in an arm lock and getting his money off the, and going back to the inn. Thank you. I had my money then. <laughs> Poor old Joseph. Um, I remember that. He works in the petrol hump, station. Down hump the Camel, I think it was called. Hump for the Camel. That's, that's Hump for the Camel. That, yeah. was, that, was, that, was, that was later. That was oh, later. That was later. It was kind of like okay. the one, the camel looked like a sea devil. Yes, that was oh, very right, strange. Okay. That, that was very. That was going into some of the bizarre new types of nativity plays. That Larry was... the Christmas Lobster. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> anyway, back to the carols <laughs> in, this, in this festive uh, festive episode. So, Tina, you did join. I remember you telling me you joined a church choir. I and did. What, what age was that then? I would have been eleven. Eleven. And mm -hmm. uh, where was the church? It was in Abbots Langley. Oh yes. Uh, St. Lawrence is the Martyr. And uh, so do you remember, remember doing the carol concerts there? Like yes. Christmas? I used to love doing the, the, the carol. And the was carol that, were, that, were they concerts. the ones where on uh, Christmas Eve you'd go there for midnight? Yes, midnight mass. Midnight mass, wow. Do you have any memories of that? I used to love going to midnight mass. We'd have lots of candles and things like that. But there was one year where I think I was head choir girl at the time and I had to start the whole midnight mass off and I had to I had to sit in the pitch dark I went up to the bell bell free mm -hmm. and I had to sing once in Royal David City okay so of course you had to just so it's just a little, little just voice me. Just, just me you. just you just wow me. that must have been nerve-wracking just a bit what bit of an experience was that it was very, very, very nerve wracking. But of course, after that, I had to obviously sing in key. And I didn't have any, I just had to do it. And so do it, do it so when you say then, singing in key, what's that? In tune. Okay. With everyone right. else or no, just no, by yourself? Just me. So did you sing the whole song by yourself or did the just rest the of the choir verse. join in? No, no. The, the first verse is just the whole church is absolutely silent and just lit by with, candles lit with candles not a sound not uh, a... everyone's watching you no nobody was watching me because they're all facing the other way oh okay so i'm in the bell i'm in the belfry in, and they're all in facing silent. the altar they're all facing the altar the opposite direction and then this little voice bursts angelic out, voice bursts out, out of the darkness and then in the second verse the organ and everybody oh, else so sings. you were just literally singing without even the organ? No, no, no? nothing that at That really all. does paint a picture, doesn't it? Yeah. That's quite, that's quite magical. Yeah. So 
seeing as that we did ask you into the studio to give us a rendition of some carols, what's your first carol you're going to sing us? Well, I am going to sing something that's not quite so upbeat, but seeing as it is such a bitterly cold day today. At time of recording. Yes. <laughs> at time of recording. <laughs> yeah. Ice. I think it's minus six outside at yeah, the moment. Yeah, I think the lowest temperature the UK's had is around minus 17 up in Scotland. And we've been getting it about, we've been having it easy at about minus six to minus, four, minus four to minus six where we are. But yes, so we've got thick snow outside at the moment. So which song is it you've chosen? I'm going to sing part of In the Bleak Midwinter. Superb. Okay, over to you. Wow, that was fantastic. That, that, was, that, that painted the picture perfectly, didn't it? Yeah, a nice snowy day. Yeah, cold. Winter weather. Winter weather, dark, frosty. Superb, team. Thank you very much for that. So there you are singing in the choir, in the belfry, as you said. And at what sort of age were you doing this? When I sung that, I think... I was probably about 14. I remember I was meant to sing it the year before. However, the, um, we had a fantastic choir master and his son's voice was just starting to break. So he sung it right. when I was meant to be singing it. Just to get because, in there quickly. To get in there before he lost the opportunity. Oh, bless him. And then he said he went all baritone, did he? Well, I, I can't remember, actually. <laughs> I don't know. What do you have? Actually, there's a good thing. Uh, I, I'm not a singer myself. So what do you... I mentioned the word baritone. So what, what type of levels of singing do you have in a choir? Well, you have sopranos. Okay. Which That's they, right at the top. They're yeah. the ones who sing the Behind higher Just part. to clarify, we're not talking about bats again, are we? What do you mean? Soprano. Oh, soprano. Yeah, sure. <laughs> there's always a bat connection. We've already had the belfry. Yeah. Oh, bats in the belfry. <laughs> That's it. Sopranos in the belfry. So, yeah. <laughs> so soprano sings the highest oh, part. However, sometimes you might have a second soprano part. Okay. Which, if you think all of the sounds, mm -hmm. when people say a word, go together and they form a chord. Okay. So if you think that typically a chord is made out of at least three notes, yep. you would have a soprano would be singing the higher note. Okay. Then usually an alto will be singing okay. the one below. Then you would have your tenors, which uh -huh. will be saying, singing the one below that. And then you'd have your basses. So they're, they're the typical where does, where's four. Where's the baritone car? I said the word baritone. Is that not associated? Have I got that wrong? Well, it's, um, so is somebody a baritone? Bass. No, well, it is, is a it, baritone. Baritone is bass. Got yes, it. it's right, just okay. another word for bass. bass. Okay. Um, so you've painted this picture of the, the first time that you were up there singing in the in the belfry mm -hmm. um what other memories do you have you know magical memories of cr the christmas time of around that uh, you know being in the church or did you go out carol singing at all did you I, go I, did the choir go from the church and go to other places to sing carols we we i don't specifically recall doing carol singing at that time with the church but i did have some fabulous visits. I got to sing in St Albans Abbey, which oh, was no, rather that, nice. That, that, should have, that must have been better, because that's where you had your graduation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, when you graduated and we've given you... That was, that was my graduation, yes, not, not Tina's. Not Tina's yes. graduation. Because you were pointing at me. Yeah. <laughs> but... It doesn't really work on audio. Though. No, it doesn't. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, so we've been to St Albans Abbey, so that must have been a, a magical experience. And, there, and also, there was a reopening. I, can't, I remember we all went on a coach trip to reopen, I'm not 
I can't remember where it was. I think it might have been Ely Cathedral, mm. but it was certainly somewhere over Norfolk Way. And it was a cathedral, and I must admit... That brings up a memory. We did the Christmas light switch on, didn't we? Oh, golly, we did, didn't we? We did. Oh, we that, did. Yeah, that was well, you. What you dressed... Jack, who's yeah. not here tonight. Yeah, he was a Dalek. He was a Dalek. Uh, I was dressed as the 11th Doctor. And Tina? you were you a were unit soldier. I was a unit soldier. Yes, you had a little stick. That's you could point indeed. at the audience. I think it was like however many thousand people or something. That's it. Like at least 5,000. You all trundled up on stage, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, I think the mayor switched the lights on. To... Yeah, it was for the light, Ely light switch on. That's and it. he was like, just pointing a microphone in your face. That's it. Say something. Uh, ah! Say something to this <laughs> <laughs> massive audience. It was even funnier when, you, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. So I didn't. Because yeah, it was I, it was completely unscripted. I, 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 only, I only saw a, saw a bit, bit of that uh, on the news bulletin when it came out. But uh, I remember you describing that um, Jack the Dalek was yeah. put on the spot as well because obviously he had the uh, Dalek voice box yeah so the modulator he was having to speak as a Dalek to 2,000 people just <laughs> on a off, stage on a stage, stage just off the cuff yeah well, I think he said something like um, Daleks have no concept of Christmas <laughs> <laughs> exterminate Brilliant. or something like that oh, <laughs> that was hilarious, hilarious. Oh, hilarious. That, the the, the the Dalek was so delicate, though, and we had to go up a ramp. Yeah, we had to push. We had, to push push, we, we had quite an intricate layout of, of scaffolding ra- with ramping to push these Daleks up. <laughs> and if you just sort of like touch the edge of the Dalek, it yeah, was very fragile. Very, very, some, very, some fragile. Were very fragile. Yeah, they were actually BBC Daleks, weren't they? Um, they were. Classic, classic yes. Daleks. Yes. Talking about that, it was actually shown on the BBC, there which was go. quite cool. Re- revisiting it, it was me with my hands in the air, like 10, 9... Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, yay! Wow. Fireballs, you're, you're, everything. You're, you're working your way around the cathedrals now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Actually, I've been in Ely Cathedral before, haven't I? Oh, yes, you've, you've oh, filmed it. Oh, man, there. that was. Okay, so I don't know who's listening. But <laughs> that was torturous. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. What, what we, other we memory has Ely Cathedral given you now? Well, we did a scene from Macbeth. Where the ghost is appearing at the banquet. Oh, yes. And there were quite a few of us there. And we literally had to be in absolute silence. In a cathedral. That's going to be difficult. For 20 minutes for each take. And we did it again. 20 minutes? And again. Silence. It, Ouch. What was yeah. happening at the time? Um, a ghost was appearing. Which version of Macbeth was this? I've no idea. Was it the one with Michael Fassbender? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's the one that I did I recall, I on that on common. As well. Was it Hankley, Hankley Common? I can't remember where we filmed it now. Anyway. <laughs> anyway we're, we're mind you, now that, mind you now, now that's a nice Christmas memory. Oh, man, that was freezing. I mean, absolute freezing. When we did that filming, we had 11 layers of clothing on, mm-hmm. including plastic bags. And you're saying mm-hmm. this is a good Christmas memory? Well, <laughs> yes, because I recall that I was in the camper yep. nearby mm-hmm. and we were doing split split days so we were starting filming at two or three in the afternoon but then we were finishing at two or three in the morning but what that meant was the following day there was nobody there when i was waking up in the morning so i'm in the middle of nowhere uh-huh. all on my own yep. but feeling completely safe and on one morning i was sitting there Nice and comfortable, cappuccino in hand, thinking this is the life. And a whole herd of deer came just, around the camper. And I was like right next to these deer, antlers and all. And this, this oh, wow. was like January, February time. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. I mean, it was proper cold. Oh, mind you. Were they was... scary or were they nice deer? Well, they were big deer. <laughs> <laughs> they were big deer. Didn't want to mind, mess with them. Mind you, that, that brings back another memory. It was so windy on that shoot on one particular night that the um the tent the marquee it t- it took off <laughs> oh dear I, I i went there on different days for filming and yeah the one end of a marquee was destroyed oh dear so we, a- oh dear. we actually got um evacuated from site and this was a good memory it's a good memory. Well, no, or was no, that well, the deer and and, and <laughs> oh my gosh i am bringing some memories up so I think on another occasion we went back, we were in one of those cargo sort of those, oh, those buildings. What are those buildings? Metal and square and ugly looking. 
and you store things in. A storage container. That's it, storage container. <laughs> We're in one of those, and we all ended up having a sing song, so that was quite good. Oh, oh there so you go. Back so to the singing nice, then. Back back to the sing. That brought us round back to the singing. Yes. And talking about singing, you're going to sing us another carol. So I think perhaps the bleak winter would have been more appropriate yeah. for that, actually. <laughs> so, uh, so what is our second carol you're going to sing us, Tina? I think we should be a little bit more cheery, and we shall sing Good Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. It's good, off, good for me. Go on, take it away. God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Saviour was born upon this day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father the blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. O oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, O oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Hey, round of applause there. Huzzah! Da, 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 da. Encore. Encore. Can, you, can Encore. I say encore? Yeah, of course you can. Okay. We're going to get another song in a minute anyway, so yes. that's good. So, uh, brilliant. So we've brought you into the Passion for Singing Carols, and after you were at, which was the name of the church? St. Lawrence's. St. Lawrence's. How long were you there singing for St. Lawrence's? Well, I don't know how things are now, but back in the day, it was kind of an unwritten rule that as a female you had to leave the choir at 16. Oh, oh dear. dear. So you so, actually had to leave the choir then? Yes. Against, I mean obviously you wanted to stay. I, th I think the thing is it, it was so kind of subliminally put out there that I think when I did come to leave it, I had other distractions. Okay, okay. But I don't feel that I would. it would have been welcome. They can't still stay be doing well, I'm that sure today. They, I'm sure they don't do that now, but at the time it, was... it would have been deemed that a lady's voice wouldn't have been wouldn't wouldn't have worked with well, what they were looking for. Exactly. That's very outdated. That's outdated. But there you go, that's back in the day. Not, this, what, this not was saying that you're the, old teen this, by the way. This, <laughs> this was in the eighties. Back in the eighties okay. okay. So this isn't now and I'm sure it's very different mm -hmm. now. But at the time it was. It, it just wasn't the thing that the ladies. If as a guy, yep. as a chap, you could start a soprano, and you know, as your voice broke, become an alto, and then maybe end up being a tenor or a baritone. But as a lady, it was. You know, you kind of had to go. So when you left, where did that lead you? Um, to go out on the town. <laughs> <laughs> I meant singing, singing-wise. Did you give up singing or did you continue in yeah, some other Did you form? find another choir somewhere? Well, I think at the time I was actually doing some exams in singing for a time, at least. At, the, uh, at a... So a heavily qualified singer in the room right now. Oh, well, yes. I'm very, very out of practice, I have to say. Well, you're sounding good to us so far. Um, but uh, no, at that time I think I had been contemplating being an opera singer. Oh, yes, and I must attest that uh, I have seen you on stage singing. Oh, that reminds me. That's what I did. I went off and did... Um, I did oh, I did continue with singing. Yes, because you went into amateur dramatics, didn't you? I went you? into amateur dramatics. That's it. And I, Do you want to tell us about that? It was good fun, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like there's a story to be told there. Maybe, maybe, oh. maybe on another occasion. I reckon. <laughs> um, but yeah, you did a lot of stage singing, and I remember seeing you on stage. And um, I know you you had a passion for opera. And uh, but you did, you did. If I if I'm right, you actually joined a choir at a Seventh Day Adventist church. I did indeed, and that was the best fun. That was the best fun. Yeah, there truly was. And I, I I had the pleasure to actually attend some of the choir practice. I didn't sing myself, no, I just I just sat in the... Uh, didn't they have a room to one side that had, like, glass in it? An observation room. Well, it got, <laughs> I don't unless, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I'm right in saying that there was a room to the side 
they had a panel of glass in and I assumed that this room was for them to take the noisy children into so the children couldn't be heard. Golly, perhaps, So I yes. used to hide in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the room in case the choir mistress, who was called Hazel, Hazel. Lovely, lady. lovely lady, but I was terrified that she'd come and grab you by the collar and force me to go to the <laughs> Stuck in cover, eh? <laughs> Stuck in cover, so I'm going in the choir room. <laughs> but but they, were, they were good times, and I remember you They were good times. They, they were the best. I think the, th- the thing is, I'm not going to get into religion or anything like that, but I think that the sort of the Church of England church that I went to is probably quite a formal, formal. high yep. kind of um, religious place to be. Yep. Whereas the Seventh Day Adventist. Seventh Day Adventist Church, so much more fun. More easy going. E- yeah. Easy going, welcoming people. We had a happy, jolly, fun time. We always did fun things. Mm-hmm. And, and had a road. wonderful time at Christmas. And I always used to come and, as I say, enjoy listening to your both the rehearsals and having the pleasure of coming to listen to the actual concerts themselves. Which brings us on to an opportunity for you to sing another carol. What are we, what are we going to get next? Well, I think when we're talking about the church that I went to, the SDA church, I remember we spent a lot of time, whether it's correct or not, I don't know, but working out the dialect, the correct pronunciation for Silent Night, uh-huh. but in German. Ah, oh, right. So you're going to give us a... A little bit of German. Silent Night. Apologies if, yeah. if, I, if, haven't got it, if I haven't got it quite right. But, uh, well, let's go. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Take it away. Wow, yeah, no, that was great. A round of applause. Huzzah. There. Huzzah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. So, obviously, you enjoyed singing with the Seventh day Adventists. And how long were you with that choir? Quite a while, actually. I think until we, around, actually, until you were born. So, that was Me? the late 90s. Oh dear. Wow, okay. Yeah. It's all my fault that you left. <laughs> no, that's no, another story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year. Yeah. Um, so, Zach, we haven't come over to you yet. What kind of wonderful Christmas memories do you have? Well, when it comes to singing, I can only really think of singing at school as yep. a little kid. But most of the time, I don't know, just general Christmas fun times. <laughs> so do, <laughs> Is that a do, thing? do you have kind of... Uh, yeah, when you hear a Christmas carol, are there any carols that sort of... Well, when I th- like listen to Christmas carols and things, I always think of 
A Christmas Carol, because that's or, well Scrooge, uh-huh. the the musical version oh, of the Christmas musical Carol version, with yeah. Albert Finney, and yeah, that is a superb film. We, we watch that pretty much yeah, every I mean, year. It's not Christmas or Winterfest, as I like to call it, without having watching that movie. Yeah, that's, it's that's because pretty it's, much got, all it's, I think got, it's got <laughs> such fun, uplifting um, songs in it. Yeah, there's a particular scene yep. where they. Are using the bells? The oh, ca- uh, camp- campanologist. Campano- ding, 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 ding. Uh, I think I can recall seeing yeah. Yeah. And that paints to me just this wonderful, happy, jolly Victorian Christmas. Christmas. Yep. With that wonderful part in that when movie, where all the bell, all the bell ringing is going, the campanology, I and they're all so jolly. And well, they're happy. doing some fantastic dancing with that as well, aren't they? Exactly. And to me, that particular bit really makes me think of a wonderful Victorian Christmas where you might have had the people skating sort of on the choc- River yeah, Thames. chocolate box, Christmas card kind of Christmas. Well, I can tell Absolutely. by the expressions on your faces Basically. you really like yeah. it. Yeah. No, that, that particular I think that, bit... that's tweaked a, tweaked a memory and a feeling there. So with that in mind, that particular yep. bit in that movie always makes me think of the song God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. We are really into the Christmas spirit in here now. Yeah. I can hear those bells. It's almost like it's some kind of ancient Victorian Christmas, Christmas party. Already, yeah. I want to go and play the minister's cat. Anyone got a cheese board? Exactly. <laughs> Where's the port? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's Ooh. the topic for another podcast. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, so, uh, after you were singing with the Seventh-day Adventist, did you continue with your singing? Well, I think um, around that time... We went to a fabulous wedding, if you remember, on Christmas Eve. Ah, yes, I do now you bring it up. That's probably one of the most magical moments that I recall sharing that Christmas uh, feeling with you in and being that, as your husband watching you perform. Uh, and it was, it was the most magical of moments, I, I must admit. Do you want to tell us all about that? Well, I have to say I was... I had never sung with a microphone before then, uh-huh. so I was a little bit nervous. But I, I think I had a little practice run before the wedding, and and my voice carried fine in the church when there was nobody there. Yeah. But of course, as soon as you suddenly get clothing in the room, all the bodies, all, 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 all they, the bodies in the room, all, all the sound suddenly gets absorbed, gets absorbed by all the clothing. Mm-hmm. Particularly, particularly at that time of year being maybe you say that Christmas. time of the year yeah maybe we should paint the picture it was actually a family wedding mm-hmm. your cousin yep uh cousin amanda marrying martin and they decided to get married on christmas eve exactly you know and and, and that was uh oh, it's probably the best wedding i have ever attended not meaning to downplay anybody else's weddings that i've been to but it was just the fact that it was christmas and we arrived at the church and it was a lovely quaint little church in lincolnshire wasn't Mm. it and when you entered the church of course being christmas it was all festooned festooned with holly and wreaths and candles candles. it was you know it was you can imagine going into a church just on any other day of the year but christmas it was just already it was like medievally christmas was it it snowing uh it was very cold i recall Mm. i don't i don't recall snow but it was, and then when we when we entered, they were handing out mince pies. Oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> Which okay. was fantastic. Yeah, and uh, and they had a traditional old chimney sweep there, you know, a bit like um, Mary Poppins' Victorian chimney sweep, which was meant to be <laughs> good luck for the bride and groom, and uh, and of course the whole place was just Christmas. It was Christmas. It was just Christmas, and and the personified Christmas. And um, at which part of the ceremony were you singing? You was you, you were you singing it after I, the after I can't before? Remember, I would imagine it probably would have been whilst the registers were being signed. Yeah, so so you'd had the bride and groom had come into the church and obviously gone through the Exchanged ceremony. Exchanged their vows. vows at the altar. But the uh, and that was the other thing because Amanda, the bride, you imagine most brides having a white dress, which she did, but because it was Christmas, she had a huge Cloak. forest green trimmed cloak 
yeah, that, that, that trailing, behind. trailing behind it was just like oh it's ah, wonderful you know it was a, a, the most amazing add-on to a to a oh. to a wedding outfit <laughs> this guy with the hood and everything and um yeah that's right and then when they went off to sign the register that was your moment it was indeed and i was so proud of her singing away no <laughs> and uh what did you sing one of the songs i sung was the holly and the ivy which i shall sing for you now Ooh, excellent, most excellent. Off you go. The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, of all the trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir. The holly bears a berry as red as any blood, and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ to do for sinners good. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir. Way well, that has really finished us on a high. Oh, feeling so Christmassy now. Oh, we are close to Christmas. I want to just attack a big box of crackers and tell jokes. <laughs> you know, it's great. So uh, that's it. It's been fantastic. Uh, I think we've just got to round off with Word of the Week, haven't we? Yeah, got Word of the Week, haven't we? I don't think Wait, you're what? going to get away with it that easily, boys. Oh, okay. okay. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, you've got me in quite a nice happy Christmas spirit now. So I think I would like to remember my choir days by having you two join in with a little We wish you a Merry Christmas to she all wants your us listeners. To sing. Oh, dear. oh dear. Oh yes. We don't sing. Uh, I'm I sure think, you can. Uh, we'll take you over the podcast. What's going on? It's all going wrong. Well, you've okay. got a choice. So what you are we going to sing? sing the twelve days of Christmas. We'll still be here at Christmas. Yeah. Maybe. Or New Year for oh, that matter. I'm not even sure I know the words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's always How about we wish you a Merry Christmas? What do you reckon, Zach? Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, well, you're in charge, choir mistress. Uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Here we go. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. La 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 la. I don't know what we do on that bit, but there, yay! Hey, we we had a sing song. Did that make you feel better, Tina? Yes. The boys got involved. The boys are back in town. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, so that just leaves us with Word, word of, of the, the week. week. So the Word of the Week this week was Elf Lock. What do we think Elf Lock means? Uh, right. It sounds like some kind of all-in wrestling move used at the North Pole. You know, <laughs> he's got him in a suplex. Now, no, no, he switched to an Elf Lock. <laughs> <laughs> Tina? And there I was thinking something a lot more straightforward, like um, some sort of big chest um, that's that you need to have magical <laughs> like words. Chest. Yeah. When, you keep, chest. when you keep elves in. Ma- yeah. Magical words that the uh, elf has has got words that he's put an elf lock on the chest so you can't get the presents out. Sounds like something from Empire. Craig, you really thought about that, it's, haven't it, you? Yeah, you, should, you should go to Empire. <laughs> so elf lock is a sweet word for describing hair that is tangled as if it is matted by elves. Oh, right. So if you've got a little curl of hair which has been... Sort of tangled together. Yes. It's an elf. It's an elf lock. lock. Like a little curl, like um Yes, it's where your hair's all twiddled together and the elves have been there overnight and matted your hair together. So well done if you got that right in the comments. Well, I'll be amazed if anybody got that right. But there you go. <laughs> I thought it was probably the most easiest of the word of the weeks we've it's, had so far. Well it's certainly very topical. Christmassy. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like that little rhyme. There was a little girl who had the little curl right in the middle of her forehead. But when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. All right. Maybe the elves had twiddled her hair up. Who knows? (laughs) Okay. Elf lock. (laughs) 
So, Tina, we've enjoyed having you in the studio today. Yes, thank has you so it much. been a fun experience? Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, it has. It's brought back a lot of memories that I forgot I even had. <laughs> okay, big question. Would you come back? Yes. To do what? Any ideas? I will talk to you about another subject that I'm interested in, and I think that I could give your viewers some valuable insight. Ooh, I wonder into what? Cats. Cats. Ooh. All sorts of things about behaviour, possible um, tips about attending to medical conditions, um, about feline behaviour. Oh, wow. Don't give too much away. So I think this is a topic that we'll have to explore in, in the new year. In 2023. Wow, that feels so far away and yet so close. Yeah, oh, dear. That's Slightly right. scary. There we go. Just a little. If you want to give your cats a treat at Christmas, get them some cat, super strong catnip. Super strong catnip. <laughs> yes, it. Yes. And you then, don't need to spend lots of money We have on fancy many toys. stories about catnip in our house. Yes. It. yes. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to this channel and comment below any suggestions of topics or activities you'd like to listen to in future episodes. You can find the Now We Know Show podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music and Apple Podcasts. Check out the Zach Wild Productions social media pages on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or visit the Zach Wild Productions website at www.zachwildproductions.com. Please get in contact, we'd love to find out how you're listening to us. So get in touch in the comments and don't forget to check out Zach Wild Productions on Patreon to become an official ZWP patron today. That's a big musical goodbye from Zach. And five gold rings, goodbye from Buzz. And we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Tina. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, listeners. Merry we'll Christmas, see you everybody. soon. Merry Bye. Christmas. Merry Have Christmas. a good one. Merry Christmas.